Hello, everyone. I'm Bina Bendel, and I am so excited today because I actually have my personal mentor coming on to the show and just about how we first met to think how what Phil is doing now. And I want Phil to introduce himself because he's done so much and he's inspired me to the fullest and really wanted to give you guys a raw conversations of a little bit of behind the scenes of how he's helping me and how our story is shaping and really transcribing to the world at this point. So Phil, welcome. Thank you for being here. Really inspiring to have here. Again, it's been inspiring to hear your story from then to see where you are now and now to be in your inner circle. It's just been that much more gratifying, to be honest. I appreciate you a lot. And I want to acknowledge you on live to say that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A few years ago, just for some context, Bean and I met in a similar, I think it was a program or event or something like that. It was an event in LA or something. And we just got to chatting. And that's like the whole purpose of, of life and business. It's chatting, having conversations with people that you may know, you may not know, and seeing where the conversation takes you. And again, that was three years ago. And now we're still here. And that's like the purpose of connections, the purpose of business, the purpose of life. If everything that we do in life and in business can just start with a genuine conversation with awesome people, life can change and life has changed over the past few years, like crazy. And I'm not yes. the same person I was three years ago, for sure, because things have skyrocketed since then. But again, mm -hmm. just, um, the seed that was planted. Yeah. And I really want people to acknowledge that it really did start with a conversation. So when I first met Phil back in LA in a room, like he, we were talking about how my business skyrocketed at that moment. Remember, I think if you remember, I walked in the room and I said, nope, I'm walking right back out because I didn't feel like I was worthy to be in that room filled with people that were high influencers. And I remember very clearly that when everyone went around the room and we're doing that mastermind that we were on together, everyone gave up their time because everyone's like, you need help. <laughs> and I remember you were like, Bina, I've been where you were. I went from zero to six figures just as fast as you did. And I remember you teaching me, get the clarity, get the automations. If you need to give yourself permission to hire a cook or hire a nanny to hire things so you're able to do more in the business. And I remember very clearly that back then I didn't have, that was probably one of the best advices I've had, but I didn't realize I needed it in that moment because I was so overwhelmed with just everything. And I remember you helping me completely slowing myself down and just gave me your permission to just hire somebody. It's okay. <laughs> and it really did. And after that, I really did hire somebody and it really did help. Yeah. Yeah. Because going from zero to six figures, six figures to seven figures, the zero to six figures is probably a lot harder than six yeah. to seven figures because you have to learn how to operate in such a different way. And, and your time is the most valuable asset, especially when you got kids, when you got family that, that you want to prioritize. The thing is, we're never really taught how to live or how to merge our personal lives with business, how to get support in our personal lives that affect our business. And the, the first thing that I knew, because I did it for myself as well, was, oh, shit, I got a lot of stuff going on the personal side of things, right? For me, it was being a new dad. We just had our baby girl. Right. And I needed to make sure that personally I was taken care of so I can focus on the business. The reality is like business growth, six, seven figures is easy. What's hard is managing the complexities of our personal life, our, our families feeling in alignment with this is how much effort I'm putting into the business. But nobody really teaches us how to think that way, because in the business world, everybody just teaches you business strategies, tactics, but nobody addresses the root cause to all the problems that end up showing up in business. And that's why I was like, just nanny, VA, the simple stuff, do the simple stuff. Yeah. The simple stuff is yeah. what's going to fix the problems. And it's the truth. And in, in even now, going back, and you're right, going from zero to six figures was the hard, that was so hard for me. And especially when it comes so quickly on so many levels, just at the right place, the right time, the right circumstance. And overcoming those personal challenges of the guilt, and you're a father, I'm a mother, you also face the same challenges of the guilt of I'm not spending time with my kids. It's just in a different light. And learning to release that type of family guilt is what I'm calling it for today. And the minute we learn to release that and get help, and I'm talking real help, get real help in your life and automate certain things. Oh my God, it makes life so much easier. Yeah, because you, you got to balance, right? There, there's a balance of delayed gratification. We got to work our ass off to get to where we want to get to. But at the same time, that doesn't mean we need to be miserable throughout the whole entire experience. 
And mm -hmm. that's where we have to understand what, what I call levers, right? We have to know when to slow down so that way we can speed up. Slow is smooth is fast. And when we slow down and we look at all these personal gaps and we're just like all of this stuff, not spending time with my wife, with my husband, with my family, I don't feel good when I don't see them. And I don't feel good because I spend so much time in the business, yet I always tell them I'm doing it for them. And then they wonder, where's mom, where's dad? And so it's this kind of balance of learning, who are you in that space? Who do you need to become to have the best of both worlds? And I think that's why a lot of people drop off from becoming entrepreneurs or business owners, because it's that personal feelings, it's those personal emotions that get somebody to say, I don't know if this is worth it. I think that like working a mediocre job or having a mediocre life is a lot easier because I don't have to make all of these executive decisions. Mm. But the reality is once you break through that, because it's only, it only lasts a season, right? Once you learn how to make six figures in a year, eventually you do that in six months. Then you do that in a month. And then at some point you, like me, make six figures in a day. But me three years ago wasn't talking like that. It took a lot of balance. It took a lot of understanding that everything is okay. If, if you fuck it up, that's okay. If you do it great, that's okay. Everything's yeah. okay as long as you don't label it everything bad all the time. And you always constantly communicate with the family. You constantly communicate with your team. You communicate with yourself, being intentional with that, and also learning to, to zoom out. Because I think a lot of entrepreneurs, business owners, high-level people zoom in so much on their day-to-day. -day, that's why we never really feel like we're doing enough. But if you actually zoom out, you're crushing the game. You're yeah. doing quite a lot. And I think that's an art form, right? That's learned over time. A lot of people, they get burnt out real quick because they try to do everything all at once. And it's that pressure of, oh my God, I need to, let me just go back to work and let me go back to this nine to five because of the stability, because of the structure. Whereas in an entrepreneurship, it's like, you can have that structure. You just need to create it. Like you can still work nine to five and then be done and have fun with your family. That's the best part where I think a lot of people miss is that, if you need that type of structure and that type of stability, you're able to create it in entrepreneurship. It just shows up differently and just have those hard balances of after five o'clock, as for me, after five, I ha I'm hands off my computer. It is straight mommy time and a straight husband time because that is what I need to refill. So that way I'm able to go back up and do what I love to do the next morning. Yeah, I think this is where people get it twisted too, right? So as we leave the yeah. nine to five, and then you're yeah. telling me I got to create a nine to five for myself. You get the option to, you get the choice mm -hmm. now. But mm -hmm. what happens is people fall back on their disciplines. They're like, I'm going to leave the nine to five so I can have freedom. I haven't earned the freedom yet. I, I, I don't make a million dollars a year or more. And now I'm going to be lackadaisical. I'm not going to be structured with my day. I'm not going to create another nine to five for myself. I'm going to be free now. And then they wonder why they don't get results. But the true freedom is saying, I'm free to create whatever I want as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. as a business owner. And I choose to work nine to five now, but I choose to work that nine to five in the way that I want to, not working for a boss. And at five o'clock, there's no boss, there's no manager, there's nobody that can keep me around. I say as a CEO of my life, family time. I'm not touching the computer. And people really get that all types of twisted because they think that before you reach success, you can have freedom. As we all know, especially if you, military veterans out there, freedom ain't free. You got to pay the price of freedom. And the price of freedom as an entrepreneur is discipline. And it's those yeah. structures, those habits, those routines, and it's prioritizing things that are your core value. And for us, at least, family is, is a big right. part of what we do. And it's true because we've had a lot of people come to me for that as well, right? They're like, how do you do this with kids? And I'm like, I work around my kid's schedule. I take calls after I drop them off from school. I have a nanny now that does pick them up from school. And so that way I'm able to have that couple hours when they're home when they're running around my house and you've had children, they run around. That's what happens. It's okay. If my kids come on calls, I embrace it. Like, oh, I'm like, well, there's Ron. There's Rhea. There's Rion. Your daughter was in the background a couple of times. You're like, there she is. And I think we have to remind ourselves that being an entrepreneurial is also embracing the kids involved with whatever they're doing. Like it doesn't have to be so structured if comes oh, yeah. in. People are too worried about like how they look. Oh, so if my kids are showing up on my Zoom calls or whatever, then I look unprofessional. And it's again, it's breaking out of the mentality of, of the corporate life. It's the nine to five life. If you're a CEO, okay, if my daughter shows up on my Zoom calls and you think I'm unprofessional, but I make more money than you, is it really that big of a deal? No, absolutely <laughs> not. If there's anybody that ever tells me like your kids shouldn't be in Zoom calls, 
you better be making more money than me. That's all I can say. Because for me, the reason why I created my life and business the way that I have is so my children literally like my office right now. Right. And yeah. sometimes she'll play in meetings, in calls, in really serious conversations. And you'll hear in the background, the people that I talk to, and I'm talking about people that make tens of millions of dollars. I'm on calls with them and it's mm -hmm. never been an issue. Right. Yeah. So people starting up, it's important to remember that authenticity is like the best thing you can possibly do and be. So that way you can have that integration of life and business and whatever you think is professional or not, you it's your brand it's your company it's who you want to work with and if you have a problem with seeing my daughter in, in a zoom call or in the background playing with toys while we're having this serious conversation you're probably not my people and i probably don't want to work with you anyway and that's the honest truth i think that's like another big thing with entrepreneurship that people have to you have to stick to your core values and you have to learn to say no for people that are not right for you and it's okay to say no I think a lot of people get, they go into this scarcity mindset that, oh my God, I want to have this conversation and it could be a, a million dollar contract or a lot of different things because I do a lot of B2B sector, right? And it's just, people don't realize if what you're saying, if they're having an issue with you and it comes in with whatever it is that's happening in the background, then you have to learn to say no and walk away with integrity because why would if money does not matter around a lot of things? It's the authenticity and the integrity of what you carry, because that is what really truly brings in the income that you truly want and the life that you're trying to create. Yeah, I think that when it, when it comes to money, when it comes to sales and things like that, people are so about getting that money that they're willing mm -hmm. to sacrifice like their life. And I've built mm -hmm. a business where I, I worked with people I didn't necessarily like. And it's very energy draining. It, yeah. it takes away the best pieces of you. You're giving all of your energy, time and attention to all of these people that you don't even like working with. And so what I decided building three seven figure businesses now, I'm only going to work with people I like. If I don't like you and I don't want you to be around me, I'm not going to make an offer to you. I'm not going to work with you. It's just not going to happen because of my energy and my time with my family, nobody will ever take my time for my family again. It's just, yeah. I will not allow it. I fired clients that have invested 180,000 with me. And I said, Hey, look, this is fucking too much. You're fired. Your money's not worth my time. You can have the business of your dreams. If you're willing to stick to your core values, focus on the types of clients you genuinely like working with you as you are, right? Some days you're super polished. Some days you're a mess. Maybe you just got off the gym or maybe you have your daughter, or your son next to you. Or maybe you're having lunch and you take the call. It's them accepting that they're working with a human. And yeah. when you build a business around people that you actually love working with and you actually enjoy being around, that's when you really achieve now. I built a business that's making me so much more money than I ever could in the corporate life than nine to five life. And I work a fuck ton more than I ever have in corporate life. But I never feel like I'm working. Mm. That is such a dream life. I'm like, damn. All I'm doing on a daily basis is developing myself, spending time with my wife and my daughters, and then working with my people. And I yeah. don't, because I energetically love everybody that's in my life, because I set very clear boundaries of who I don't want. I love everything that I do. And I literally every day, I'm just like, what do I want to do? Not what do right. I need to do? How do I survive? It's what do I want? And now I've created a life of me wanting things. Whatever I want is what I focus on, not what I need based on survival. So don't ever chase money and those clients just for the sake of feeling good about your business growth, because it's not worth it in the long run. You think that you want money right now, but when your time and energy is gone, you're going to be miserable and nobody's building a business to be miserable. And that's a really good point, because I think that's a real big key in entrepreneurship is that a lot of the times in entrepreneurship, they do follow the money. They feel like they need to chase the money. They chase the dream, chase the success stories, chase whatever it is, chase to be the next Phil, the next Bina, whatever it is. It's, and I always do this with reminding even with my clients, because I'm very passionate with my clients too, where it's just chase your dream, chase what you want and create it for yourself. And I think that hum, human to human connections in some of the other programs that are out there are gone. Like in your program, the human connection is so strong. Like it comes back. Like on our calls, we're very much just, it's a family. If I don't show up on these calls for a reason, and I've done this multiple times, I'm like, I feel like I'm missing something. And it's because I haven't been on the calls. And then when I go back on the calls, it's, oh, I'm re-motivated. I'm re-comes in because it's just like you're building that community of everyone wanting to help each other 
versus that community, I'm going to bring you down or we're in competition. Whereas other programs can feel like you're in competition with other people. Yeah, the coaching industry's fucked. And, and everybody that's a fake coach, consultant, all those people are going to get fucked just in the future, like now and in the future. Why? Because what they've done is they've made coaching, consulting, business so transactional that people don't trust people now online. And that's why authenticity is the way forward, because now you simply just being yourself, you're going to repel all the people that maybe just want your technical knowledge, but don't actually want to work with you. They just want to take from you. Again, th those are like the very needy clients and people have grown massive businesses, burn burning people inside of this industry. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. But the beautiful part about that, all of them will come tumbling down because the people that are the most authentic, the people that really want to genuinely help the people that are plugged in with them they're going to survive because just like that feeling, it's camaraderie. It's something much deeper than a transaction that's being forged and built. And when you think about business going back to the old ways or being like cave people again, that's yeah. where you can really trust who you're surrounding yourself with. It's yeah. hey, Bina, if you're ever in danger, just know I got your back. I won't let you right. die. And when you think about business, and, and again, I'm a machine gunner from the Marine Corps, so mm -hmm. I have a different way of looking at business, which is I got your back. And I want Literally. you to know that. And if you know yeah. that, then why wouldn't you continue to do business with me if I'm always delivering to make sure that you have the best experience, you, you have the best type of support, and I'm there for you when you, you need me. Most people yeah. in the industry are so transactional. They're like, go watch the thing I just made. Go look at that thing. And it's so surface level that people are pissed off that they've invested their hard-earned money with people that don't actually give a fuck about them. And that's yeah. why the people that do it different and genuinely care... They're going to rise to the top over the course of the next few years, for sure. And, and that's like a real big thing is when you are hiring a coach, I always tell people one thing, as if you are hiring a coach, that coach is also hiring you. Like it is a transaction. I know there's a lot of people out there that have invested in a lot of money and they're still not getting the results that they are looking for or comes in because of what you were talking about. It's that human to human connection again. It's not transitional. If you go into those transactional coaching containers and they have it like a do it for you type of thing, it, it, it's going to take you longer as an entrepreneur to get to where you are versus working with a coach that is very human connected, that has your back. And it might take you, it might actually initially be slower, but we also have to remind each other that entrepreneurship is for a lifetime. We're not trying to make, it, it's a lifetime game. Not like this quick fixes. And initially, yeah, we may have gotten quick fixes. Me and you may have been fortunate with certain things on quick fixes, but it's also sustainable. Like we never went back from not having multi six figures or less than six figures because we have just maintained it on so many levels because we've grown and we've stayed humble. It was like, Phil, I got your back and hey, I know you have mine at the end of the day, because that is why I'm in your container presently. <laughs> And it's, it's different for different people, right? And and it, it's being able to give what that person needs. There's some clients, I don't do it with you. Some clients, I just kick in the fucking teeth sometimes though. They keep yeah. getting in their way and they need to hear it. And I'm like, you need to stop fucking thinking this way. And I'm very <laughs> direct, but I give them what they need. But they always know it's coming from a place of caring. It's never right. from, I'm going to beat you down. I'm going to make you feel like shit. Right. You're, you're going through this loop of bullshit in your head and it's causing you to stay stuck. You need to stop doing that and implement everything that we've talked about the past few weeks. Fortunately with you, I've never really had to have that conversation because <laughs> you're a go-getter and you just run and gun. But that's what I mean. So don't think that I'm telling everybody that's watching this, just be nice to your people. Be what your people need you to be for them. Because what happens yeah. again with, with the coaching industry and why it's fucked is everybody's treated the same to make it scalable. Everybody's going to go through the same course material, the same homeworks, blah, blah, blah. But the coach, the primary coach, doesn't actually know how to personally develop somebody to get past what's making them stuck. Everybody gets stuck for different reasons. My biggest yeah. thing was like self-worth. I didn't feel worthy of making a lot of money. I think when I started making like 7.5K per client or something like that, I started feeling guilty because I was like, damn, there's people in the Philippines that, that don't even make this in a few years. And yeah. here I am making this from the comfort of my own home. It like it literally held me back. And if I wasn't able to personally identify what was holding me back in that space, which was self-worth, I would not be able to have a, a six-figure day nowadays. Because then imagine right. the guilt that I would feel then. If I felt that way for 7.5K, 
what is a hundred thousand dollars in a day going to make me feel like? But now I've gotten to the point where I've adjusted my money mindset. I've adjusted all these things. But again, working with somebody who gets to know you personally, yeah, that's the most important. You can have 85% of what needs to be done on paper, but that 15% or really it's 20% of the person and coaching them, consulting them in the right way for what they need specifically, that's what gets people results. And that's what's lacking. Everybody wants mm -hmm. to have a fully automated fucking business. That's not how business should be ran. And it's true. Even like in my coaching container right now, I have three modules that they listen to. And when they're done, everyone's like, are you going to have new modules? Are you comes in? I said, no. You know why? Everything you're going to need to know is on the calls. Everything you need, you will get on the call. Now, if we need to have something specific, a business proposal or whatever you want to learn, those we can do, but it'll still be learned on the call. Because then it shows up. It connects. You're connecting with them. You're teaching them things that you have learned and that you've valued. And that way it is, it is individualized because yeah, I can go in and modules, but then why, why would I hire somebody if I can just go watch it? It just feels like I'm back in school again. And for me personally, just with me, what I've learned is the way I coach is just, I feel like sometimes it can be busy work. Now you've learned this from me. I don't listen to modules. I don't do them. I don't have time for it. If I can do it and you can just teach me something in five minutes, voice me or comes up, say, like, Hey, Bina, just do X, Y, and Z. And then I run with it. That works. But you have to know your individual clients. Some people need to slow down. And some people are like me that just runs and guns all day long. And I think that's also the thing with some of the entrepreneurs is that you have to learn what works for you. But also you have to incorporate what works for you into your program. And those are the clients you're going to really attract. Yeah, I think that I think a lot of people that are just starting out, like, I think they're still getting to know their philosophies. I think they're still getting to mm -hmm. know like how they do business, especially if you've never been a business owner, especially if it's your first business or maybe it's your first successful business. There's so many right. different things you're still, again, learning about yourself. And when you change the business model and stop comparing yourself to the big fish out there that have been around for 30, 40 years and things like that, and you make a decision to just do it your way. Do it the way that that works for you. Like when I started Underdog Uprising, okay, th this is my primary effort right now. When I started Underdog Uprising, I remember telling everybody, I don't have shit. I don't have a course. I don't have modules. I have nothing, basically. I think I'm going to maybe do a weekly call. I don't know. But if you want to do life with me, plug in. That was my offer. I didn't know shit about what was going on. But people have watched how dedicated I am to the people that I work with over the years. And they were just like, you have nothing, but I want to do life with you. And I'm like, okay, great. This is what it looks like. We'll jump on a weekly call and we'll figure it the fuck out. And it was bare bone and dry. And I think that in nine, it might be nine months, it might be 10 months, Underdog Uprising got to a million and 3,000. So under a year. And I tell people this and they're like, no way. There must be some special fucking thing that you did. And I'm like, well, you can keep believing that or you can fucking listen to what I'm saying. Because I'm, I, I don't really hold anything back as you might have noticed so far. <laughs> if you just understand how to trust yourself, how to build your business the way that you want to, that's unique to you, that's what the marketplace wants. They want somebody unique. They don't want somebody that's just fully automated, cookie cutter, sounds like everybody fucking else. Nobody wants that anymore. People want to know that if I plug in with you, number one, are you going to help me get the result? But number two, can I trust that you're going to be around? Can I trust that when I actually get stuck, I'm going to be able to have conversations with you that I don't have to yes. go through person one, two, and three to get an answer that really doesn't help me at all. And then now I feel yeah. like I've wasted my time. I'm in a worse position and it's now I'm starting to regret that I've done this. And I'm just like, how the fuck is that possible? Yeah. What kind of business is that? It's a fully scaled business apparently, but terrible client reviews. First of all, I want to acknowledge you for that because I didn't know it, in 10 months it did over a million dollars. So congratulations. And I was one of the first people I think you reached out to, or I think we had conversations with, and you're like, hey, you want to do life with me? And I'm like, done. <laughs> I don't even think, I think the conversation was like all via messenger. We didn't even talk on a call. And I was just like in a place because I trusted you already. And I was already in a place where I was just like, whatever I was working with at that particular time, something needed to change. I personally needed to change. But I love how you say, but you have, like you've shown me myself that my coaching when I coach my people it's me 
there's no no one else. And we've done live calls with you every day for what we did it for five months. Yeah, it was just like fuck it. I guess what was we'll it was five daily. months every day, <laughs> like every mm -hmm. day, mm -hmm. and it was amazing because it really with the people in our community. It really did help. A lot of people were like, oh my God, everyday calls. But it was just like everyday calls because if you had a question from yesterday and it carried over to today and you still needed that extra clarity, you were able to ask you very quickly in live time saying, hey, Bill, I know we had this conversation yesterday, but can you repeat what you said or can you rephrase it in a way that makes sense to me? And it was just that live time things where a lot of people that did that. I know have skyrocketed personally. Like I know they all have done very well because of that. They didn't have to wait a couple of weeks. I didn't realize a month. That's insane. I try to respond to the people who are in my container within by the end of the day, just because it's just, that's what I love because that is what I was lacking. So it's a big thing to remind people that if you're coaching and you want a coach and you comes up that the coaching does come from you. And if you want to scale it, still be a high presence in your, with your people. Yeah. yeah. I think that people want the, it's again, it goes back to the money, right? They want the money yeah. so fast. They don't want to do any work. They want to live on the fucking beach and do basically nothing. But the thing is in order to really grow a multi seven figure business, you have to attach mission and purpose to what you do. And if yeah. you're so detached from the heartbeat of the business, how can you possibly live with mission or purpose? How do you have a purpose every day to wake up? to do the hard things in life, to learn how to balance family and business? How do you become the CEO you actually need to be to get your business to the level where you can have that freedom? If you're trying to scale yourself out so quickly, people try to automate their sales, they try to automate their content, they try to automate like everything. And I'm like, I still do all of this shit. I still, I'm still doing everything. She has this new thing about pancakes. And I was literally like DMing somebody back and they enrolled into one of my low ticket personal development programs for like 2K. And then 2K came in and I was like, I literally was just eating eggs. But what happens is because I'm so involved with my business, it's very easy to make sales. Why is it easy to make sales? Because I'm connected to everybody I'm talking to. My message yeah. on social media, it's like live connection. It's based yeah. on all of the conversations I'm having with people. I'm taking mm -hmm. all the energy from all the people and I'm curating content based on all of that stuff. So I connect with people. I'm DMing people. I'm having conversations with people. I'm working mm -hmm. with people one-on-one -on -one inside of Voxer. There's so much I'm involved with, and that's why people are happy. And when people are happy, if this was a secret to anybody, when your clients are happy, your business grows. Yeah. So if your clients aren't happy and they're not seeing you and you're like, oh, fuck, I hope this person doesn't reach out to me and that they're not getting results, fucking do your job and help them get results. Like right. that that's how business works. You get the client, you make sure you deliver for them and help them get them unfucked from their situation, get them results, and your business will grow. I think people really are so selfish when they start businesses. They're like, I'm about my money. I want my money. And mm -hmm. I'll take people's money. And then I'll try to not talk to them. And I'm going to hope and pray that I have the lifestyle that most people want. But I'm not going to do what it takes to earn it. Yeah, and that's a big thing because there's a lot of models out there that does that where they invest with somebody. And then in reality, they talk more to their point coaches or they talk more to other people. And it is, it goes back to that heart center connections. I want to work with my people. I love working with the people who I'm invested or who has invested in me because it's like, I get to see them grow. I love that. I love watching somebody to come in and then all of a sudden they have this big aha moment and then they go and they crush it. And you're like, Hey, congratulations. That's amazing. It's, I feel blessed with it, especially when I have people in nurse coaching world who are going out and landing these large B2B deals or when they're out doing amazing things in the community. It's like, I love to see that, but I have to only way I really know what's going on is because I'm very much like you. And I've learned more and more from you is to stay highly involved, but I was always like that prior, but now it's just like that one step. It's just up leveled even more just from being in this, in the underdog uprising community. And for everyone to know, if you guys are looking for that type of support, please join this community. It's amazing. And it's not like there's no competition. It's like, oh, you're doing this. And how come you're not promoting yours? Because it has nothing to do with that. It's the people that comes in. If you want to go with the levels of where you want to be, then go. Like, <laughs> I actually, I, I tell everyone, please join Phil's container. Because 
it really works. It truly does. Yeah, and, so I appreciate and the you. thing is, yeah, I appreciate that. And the thing is, I think people have this weird thing about building business, right? I, I personally know people that do a million dollars in their business, but their profit margins are so low because they try to scale themselves out. There's people that do a million dollars per month that barely pocket twenty five to fifty thousand dollars. Can you imagine building a million dollar per month business? All of the moving fucking parts, and you only make twenty five fifty thousand no. dollars. That's so dumb. Like, why not it's just make fifty to a hundred thousand and pocket eighty percent, eighty five percent of that, and and be done with it? Why add <laughs> all the complexity? And I think again, it goes back down to personal development. People yeah. don't want to learn how to lead people. Coaching, consulting, and business is about leadership. If you don't know how to lead people and you don't trust yourself to lead people, you're afraid that your client is going to say something and you're not going to have the answer. So your ego gets in the way and you're like, let me scale this out. Let me hire somebody else to take on those questions. And now you're operating from a place of fear and anxiety. Tell yeah. me about your problems and I will help you figure it the fuck out. And if I don't know the answer for whatever reason, I'm going to find the answer and then we're going to figure it the fuck out. Right. That's how it is. And again, when people can feel that, like you're really in it side by side in the trenches with them, it's game over. Your business will always grow. People will always do deals. I have people that, that are making $5,000 and they're like, I never thought I'd be able to make a $5,000 client. I never thought that I'd be able to get paid this much for what I actually do. And they're like yeah. in tears. And I'm like, yeah, good shit. I told you. Now get the fucking go back to work. Don't do it again. People like the fuck yeah, we talking do about here. And then I got people like, oh, I made 30 grand, 40 grand. I'm like, good. Now get to the next level because right. what happens is I raise the bar for people because I'm like, I know you can do so much more. Yeah. I have so much belief in the people that I work with where they think that I'm going to stop and be like, oh my God, great fucking job. Sometimes I do. But for the most part, I'm like, I was waiting for you already to do that. I thought you and should have you've done, done that, that with me months. multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm just like, you just keep going. <laughs> great. I, th I told you, you should be doing that like months ago. That's how much yeah. I believe in my people. Right. Yeah. And so cool. it's it's very important to just remember that business can be so fun when, when you look at it from the right perspective. Business yeah. growth can be so fun and not complicated when you do things the, the right way. You know what I mean? So uh, again, it's like opening up people's awareness that like business does not have to be whatever you've been sold or taught. Business should be fun. It's going to be hard work. You're, you're going to cry. So don't get it twisted again. It's going to be hard, but you're going to love it. You're going to love who you become in the process. And yeah. if you learn to become great in all areas, in your family, with yourself, inside of your business, as a leader, as an operator, as a marketer, as a sales pro, all of the hats you're going to have to wear, if you just learn to master all of those areas, you are going to love who you've become in that process. And that's where you really win. It's not about the fucking money. It, and that's the truth. It really isn't. It's about self-development and who you, what, for me now, it's more of, I always say this, it's like this hashtag watch me type of industry now, right? Where it's just, it's more of the purpose, more of a movement, more of let's get more people feeling this confident and for them to know to see where they want their passions to be. So that way they're also living their full dream and live with them. To, but it's all fun. Yes, there's a lot of stress around it. And a lot of people, I think when people get twisted, they go, what do you mean you have fun? But yeah, like with a lot, I can talk about myself right now. I have a, a super mom CEO event happening in July. And a lot of people are like, oh my God, this is so stressful. You're doing this in three months. I said, you are correct. <laughs> I am doing this in three months and three kids with a very full schedule. And guess what? I'm having the best fucking time of my life because it's fun. It comes in every conversation I've had, everything I've done. It's because it's fun. The outcome is to empower women, to help people, to help these things go through. But at the same time, it's however many people is in that room is who I'm going to serve. I'm not worried about, I need to serve 50 people. I need to sell it out. I need to do this. Then it comes into the money aspect of things versus now it's just, look, y'all, this is going to be a fun event. We're going to have fun. You're going to be with me. You're going to be with a bunch of females that are going to enjoy themselves. And now it's just like adding that fun part to it. It's I got five people already enrolled. And we have about another five or 10 people who are highly interested. And it, they're just waiting to pull the trigger because it's fun. It's fun again. When you make it like that community, the camaraderie, the connection that we've yeah. been talking about this whole time. That's why people would want to get involved. Because when you think about Supermom CEO, 
when you think about em empowering women that are mm -hmm. based like literally pro you should probably make a super mom ceo shirt like that's a hard thing to do it's yeah. hard to run operate and manage a company because you're running operating and managing a family my <laughs> household would not be the household that it is without my wife and so yeah. i know because i don't know how hard it is for her to manage all that so when you think about the brand when you think about the message when you think about the mission that's why all of these women are like, I want to be a part of this because it's an identity. It's you're proud to have all of this chaos, have all of the weight of the world and just be like, damn, everybody's complaining that it's hot today. And I'm like, fuck, I've been doing all this stuff with the family and I got the business and I'm running and operating and doing all these things. And people are worried about how hot it is today, how cold it is today. People think they have problems, but we as super mom CEOs, we just crush and dominate every single day. And we want to show other women all over the world exactly who you can become if you're yeah. willing to plug in with the right tribe. And then you become examples. And then again, you become leaders in the world. And what happens yeah. is that inspires and evokes so much more emotion in people because maybe there's a CEO mom out there who doesn't believe in herself. Maybe she's gotten beaten down before just emotionally hit after hit in business. And she's trying to do right by her family, do right by her kids. And she hasn't been able to find a community. And now she feels like I can be and belong to part of a community of, of, of other women who just fucking get it. Because there's, there's places you can go to and they won't get it. Not to the level that you're going to be able to offer inside of this experience. So I think that's an awesome mission. Thank you. Thank you for that. It really does come down to your community. It comes down to your personal growth. And it really comes down to what type of leader do you want to create? And I think once we learn what type of leader we want to be in our own personal world, then the pe that will automatically gravitate to the people that you want to coach on and people that you want in your life and to help them out at the end of the day. You know, and I think that's a good thing. So I wanted to ask you, if you had for a lot of the new entrepreneurship that are out there, what is the one lesson that you've learned that you wish you knew when you first started? One lesson. Oh, I, this is fucking easy. All the negative shit you're going to experience, label it as normal. Mm. Okay. Because I think that I felt like I was rejecting a lot of the pain, the hardship, the, I don't understand what to do. Is this the right way? Is this the wrong way? What if I'm completely fucking up my life and my family's life by doing this thing? I'm so fucking scared. Am I ever going to actually produce or am I going to get it to the level where I can provide for my family? All these questions and fears and doubts, that's why it was so hard, I believe, to, to, right. to launch my first business because I spent so much time in the negative emotions rejecting that it was normal. I didn't have anybody to talk to about this shit. This is why I talk about it so much with people. I'm like, it's yeah. normal. You're going to feel that way. I fucking hid under my desk for months crying because I'm like, fuck, man, my daughter's about to be born. My wife's counting on me. She's going on maternity leave. I fucking lost my job. What the fuck am I going to do? But yeah. for some reason in my mind, I was like, this is not normal. I should automatically crush it, even though I've never crushed it with, with a business that's scaled. And so yeah. if you normalize the hardship of this journey, if you normalize that everything bad that will happen, because a lot will happen, both in the business and personal, and you might be getting beaten down after beaten down. And when you finally get back up, then something personal happens to you. Like it's a whole thing. Just be prepared. Yes. It's a complete life test. It's not just going to be tested in your business. You will be tested. You will literally go to the point of breaking. And your whole thing is just don't break. The whole point is able everything as this is part of the process. We're not like, oh my gosh, I feel sore. I'm tearing my muscles. I should stop. We don't do yeah. that. We say, oh, I feel good. It feels like shit, but I also know I'm getting strong. So if you can right. feel like shit when you're building your business, when you're launching, when you're fucking up, when you're making all these mistakes, when things are just not going right, when you can't land a client, when the financials are all types of fucked up and you're just like, I don't know how I'm going to pay my mortgage next month. Like when you get to those points, label yeah. it normal. Label it as this is the price I have to pay for the freedom that I said I want. And if I right. did that, I think that I would have had an easier time accepting where I was. And by doing that, then I could enjoy the experience, which would give me more energy to put back into the business and with my family. And so I think it's really being able to reframe and understand if your business coach, mentor, or guide has never told you that it's going to be a shit show and to make it normal, then let me tell you that now. It's going to be a shit show. It's going to be the hardest test of your life. This is not for the faint of heart. You want freedom? Pay the fucking price. Pay the price every day for not months, but years and be willing to pay the price for the rest of your life. 
Because if the, all you do is by the end of your life, finally succeed, at least you kept your word. At least you did the thing. At least you delivered your promise to your family. That becomes your purpose now every single day versus being a zombie in a tr uh, traditional job. Because just always remember that the door to mediocrity is always there for you. But the only thing that you're going to regret is not seeing what you're capable of and what you're made of. So accept all the bullshit because it will come. Normalize it and then learn how to master yourself to get through the days, through the times and just take that next step fucking forward. That's all you got to mm. do. That's beautifully said because I think a lot of people state that entrepreneurship is a solo path. And there are a lot of hurdles, even in my own world, which you know, there's a lot of hurdles that comes with it. And you're right. You have to make it normal. You have to make it where this is just part of my path. I need to push through and then keep going. So that way, you whatever success means for you, that's the path you're going to take. But it goes back to that mission and drive. It goes back to what you want to create. Oh, well, I want to say thank you. I know we're almost up at time. So I wanted to say thank you for being here. I really appreciate that. If anyone wants more information about Underdog Uprising, we'll have the information below. I highly recommend it. It is, it's changed my life and my business around tremendously. And I'm super honored for you to be on here as my mentor. <laughs> it's nice for people to see our relationship as mentor because this is just a real talk. Phil can kick my ass at days when he really needs to. <laughs> I appreciate but you having me very on. Loving things. So whatever's needed, because again, it doesn't matter. At some point, all will be forgiven because you know that I'd rather you be mad at me than you bleed out. That's the biggest thing. Okay. And I appreciate you having me on it. Guys, if you've heard of the Super Mom CEO event and you want to be plugged into a tribe, a group of women that are empowering each other, led by probably the Super Mom CEO, mm -hmm. and you're tired of doing this on your own, grab a spot, grab a ticket. Immerse yourself in the experience and just understand that life and business can change completely when you surround yourself with the right people. This path does not have to be lonely. It's only lonely because so far you've only been surrounding yourself with people that don't understand, that don't get you. They try to, but they don't. This place, this experience, this event that's coming up, you will be understood and you'll finally find a home. Plug the fuck in. Oh, thank you. All right, guys. I will see you. Bye, guys. Take care.